Your cells of the uh, lining of the urethra and things of that nature. So what they're going to do with the specific, gra specific gravity is going to test to see how low it actually is. Uh, the cutoff usually is 0 .005. Or 1.05, uh, 1.005, depending on how specific they want to be with that. Um, if it's lower than that, they can't give a definitive answer on the test, and they will. They can't say you failed it, and that's the important part. That um, what they can do is say that the sample was improper; it was not usable due to due to being too dilute. Uh, it is not legally uh, a breach of contract for most companies to have a dilute sample because someone can just pee a lot. I personally, I drink four liters of water a day, or at least I try to, so my urine's basically like water. That's just how mine ends. Some people don't drink a lot of water, so they have a very dark pee. So they really can't use that against you. Now, they're allowed to retest you later on down the road once they get the results a week later, but at that time, you're going to be clean and good to go. Um, now, creatinine. Creatinine is a uh, constituent of urine that is heavily tested for. Uh, normally, it's used in testing for kidney function. Uh, the reason why it's also used in for the adulteration is because of with the kidney function, they can also test to see how pure the sample of the uh, urine is. Even with flushing out your system, you can still have a higher level of creatinine with a lower specific gravity, showing that your system is used to uh, pumping out that much water. If you exercise a lot more, you have a lot more creatinine in there, uh, things of that nature. And then nitrates are an actual uh, adulterant. Um, nitrates can be in vivo or in vitro, meaning outside the body, inside the body. Um, and what these do is these will help break down uh, the chemicals. So they test for the nitrates to make sure nothing was put in there that is going to um, skew, the uh, skew the actual chemicals itself so they can't be tested for. Um, actually, something I forgot to add to the adulteration is a um, what they do when they test for you also is if there is any kind of um, concept that maybe someone took something and decided that they were going to you know put a little bit of soap in there or a little bit of bleach and bleach is far more commonly used than you think. Um, that is going to throw the specific gravity to such a high level that they aren't going to be able to use it and also you're going to be able to smell it very quickly and know that the sample has been adulterated uh, right off the bat. What they will do in that instance, because you'll be able to smell it so quickly, so defined, the person's going to have to stay there legally or they officially failed the drug test. Um, that sample that is adulterated will stay and it will be sent along with a new sample that is, has to be observed with being illegal. Um, they will take both samples, they run them simultaneously and put them with the same report so the person can see definitively that there was a contamination attempt on the sample. Um, I've had to do, personally, I think maybe four or five of these. Uh, they're not fun, and in that instance, usually you want to call security uh, because you will have people trying to fight you, uh, and that's you know, just not fun. Um, now, for, let's see how much time I got half. Wow, I have a lot more time than I thought I was going to have. All right, now for, I'm guessing it's going to be the fun part for me. Um, I would like to do a little bit of a q and I saw a couple people are writing their hands. Um, gentleman, was it like right there? Yes, that's um, definitely a major aspect of it. Um, I do not know what the, I don't, like I said, my hospital personally has never used um, L-Analyzer EIA for LSD. Um, 
which I don't know what their cutoffs are. Usually it's a lot higher, so they aren't going to be detected. Uh, GCMS, though, will be able to detect up those really, really small, uh, minute amounts of the LSD. Um, there's also the fact that some people, when they take LSD, will take large amounts of LSD, which is also going to be easier to find. Um, but those people are usually a lot more obvious when the uh, drug testing them, too. Um, <laughs> Um, luckily, I've never actually had someone actively tripping on me when I've had to drug test them. Um, I've had plenty of people actively fucked up, you know, brought in by the police. You get a couple of cohorts every here and there. Uh, they're fun ones. Um, but yeah, that's a very, also a very good point, and I thank you for bringing that up. Um, the fact that it's such a small amount is being taken does really weigh in heavily to the ability to test it. Um, it is testable, but that small amount does make it a whole lot harder and that actually does add into the ineffectiveness of actually trying to test for LSD. Ketamine, I can almost guarantee they do. I've never actually seen a panel that included it. Um, a lot of more obscure drugs um, beyond like the standard 5, 10, 12, maybe even a 15 panel, um, they have ways of testing for other drugs. Um, you know, like say ketamine being a good example, but they don't commonly test for them for the simple fact of they're not common enough. Uh, ketamine is actually considered more of a dangerous drug than say like LSD would a lot of times. Um, and what you have to usually do to be able to find out if something can be tested for is just you have to get a hold of a company and look at their log of potential tests to see if they actually do offer that. Um, companies like MedTox and LabCorp are major ones who actually can be able to test for that. Lab, uh, LabCorp being a uh, medical purposes and uh, MedTox usually being for a, um, like MedTox, Quest are going to be actual legal. Um, yes? Uh, um, list of foods, we don't deal with that at, like a, as a collection site. Um, tests now are becoming more and more specific um, and they're becoming more accurate, so we don't have to worry about that as much. Um, I would say about 10, 15 years ago, actually, like I believe it was ibuprofen could cause a false positive for THC. Uh, nowadays it doesn't. They found out ways to get around that. Um, certain foods like you know poppy seeds being a common one with the opiates uh, could potentially give you a false positive. Um, but you have to eat so many of them that it's unreasonable and it can also determine that potentially it could be this concept. Um, also, uh, actually that brings up another concept I uh, forgot to mention, is that if you're on a legal drug and you have to take a drug test, say you're prescribed some hydrocodone because you have some back pain or you, you know, have an abscess tooth or something like that, you don't have to worry about taking your piss test and failing it on that specific chemical because with the drug test there is a what's called an MRO, medical review officer. Um, this MRO, what he will end up doing is he will look over all these positive results and say an opiate shows up and ends up being hydrocodone. He will personally call people uh, or maybe even have a secretary or something like that do it and verify uh, prescriptions to make sure that you're actually legally allowed to be on said drug when it shows up. That way he can give, it was, the drug test will sh still show that you did it and it'll still show a flag of that you quote unquote failed your drug test but there'll be a note along with it saying the patient or the specimen that the carry the specimen was allowed to be on this drug at the time of the collection and um, then they will not have a uh, falsified report. They will not be a failing of the actual test on that instance. Um, green shirt. Yes. First, uh, I have a question uh, for you about Meconium. Uh, so I'm, I'm a pediatrician. And, and oh, okay. Uh, 
Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, actually, uh, wow. Uh, the hospital I work with actually, for some reason, I don't know why, loves meconium. Uh, we've, I, I, I mean, that's just, yeah, oh, trust, oh, I agree. It's a pain in my ass. Uh, it's a serious pain in my ass because the nurses do all the legal chain of custody forms completely wrong every time. And it's just a hassle beyond belief. Um, but yeah, I mean, we always do a screen with the mother first, um, and then we will end up going to meconium. We've done a urine, I think maybe once or twice. Um, I think my hospital tried to, stay, t tried to stray away from it because of the sample quantity. So, but um, I'll, thank you for the confirmation on that, though. And, and it's very messy. My second question was, yes. Um, honestly, it's going to be varying upon uh, multiple factors. Um, the biggest factor actually is going to be whether the drug is fat soluble. That's the reason why THC is tested for so long after that you've smoked pot, especially with chronic use, is that your body is going to be storing all that uh, the THC metabolites in your body fat, and as your body burns through the fat cycles, it gets slowly released over time. Um, it can range. T, like say THC with being fat soluble, you know, you smoke pot once after having not smoked it for a year, it could be out of your system in two or three days. Um, I have personally seen someone who was demanded by child services to come in and give a urine sample daily to test their THC levels, and he was throwing positives for three months without smoking anything. So he said. Um, <laughs> But that, with him, was a chronic use. I mean, I ended up talking to him quite a bit because him and his girlfriend had come and both do it. And while she was in there, um, he claimed to have smoked nearly half an ounce to an ounce of pot a day by himself for at least six to seven months. And it, that kind of chronic use is what it would take to be at a test for that long of a time as a positive without actually uh, taking any drugs anymore. Um, oh wait, hold on. Um, but for the other drugs, um, they're in your system for a lot less of a time. Uh, granted, with chronic use, it can be a lot longer. Um, cocaine can have a range of anywhere from a couple of days to about a month. Uh, most drugs are in your system for only a few days. Heroin cannot be directly tested after, I think, seven hours because your body metabolizes it so fast, which also lends to its high level of ad uh, addictiveness. Um, and then also your general body chemistry. Some people's body chemistry is they metabolize things faster, so they're going to be out of your system faster. Some people have a slower metabolism, like you know, yours truly. And so for someone like me, I will probably retain a positive result if I were to take something for a lot longer of a period of time. So I mean, it's, you have to, it's harder to tell unless you actually you know, take a drug and then take a piss test, take a piss test, take a piss test, and find out exactly what the half-life is, is it for you specifically. Um, I saw your hand. Uh, in regard to uh, mushrooms and urine, okay. were you referring to uh, psilocybin mushrooms or amnium muscaria? I thought it was the amnium muscaria because the uh, muscle mom, whatever it is, is psychoactive in, uh, in urine. Hmm. Um, honestly? Uh, yes, he was asking. Uh, there's multiple kinds of mushroom, uh, psychedelic mushrooms. Uh, there's psilocybin, and then there is. Um, can you repeat that one again for me? Amandina. Um, I don't know what the active uh, chemical in that one is. Um, that could be very well. That's only that. Uh, he was asking the difference between those two different kinds of mushrooms. Um, if it's which one is actually the one that is going to be psychoactive in the urine. Um, personally, I forgot to research. Uh, which one it was going to be. Uh, I can look that part up fairly quickly. If you want to talk to me after the uh, speech, get with me. I'll look that up in a heartbeat. Um, I know a couple of really good websites that give that kind of information, too. Um, I do know that the psilocybin does get uh, out of your system quickly. Uh, I've had that, I've found ways to have that tested out. Um, the other one, I'm not really too sure. Um, if you find out the location of the mushroom itself, it would be a lot easier because I know they used reindeer. It was like the Inuits and the Eskimos who were uh, highly the ones who did that. Um, yes, you're right there. Uh, 